this is how Europe works today, and this can be acceptable in limited areas, coal and steel, economic areas, you can live with lack of democracy. But when you go in very sensitive issues like abortion, religion, the right to strike, social security, when you go in such topics, then you need to have democracy. I'm not here to say what you shall vote. I know what I would vote if it came for a referendum in Denmark. But we are very, we are very concerned not to interfere from other countries in your vote. It's up to you to decide what you will vote to the Lisbon Treaty. Our role is to inform on the content in this Lisbon Treaty. And uh, we are prepared to take a lot of questions. We work with that in a very solid way. Klaus is preparing a reader-friendly edition of the Lisbon Treaty so you can read it. Because you shall know that what is published until now, what is signed by the Prime Ministers, is a text they have never, ever read. Never. Why? Because it can't be read. This is not a treaty. This is 300 pages of amendments to 3,000 other pages of treaties. And you can only read it if you take one amendment by one and then look it up in the existing treaties and insert it. We'll do that job for you so that you will have a reader-friendly edition where it's possible. They have decided in the Council that it's not allowed for any institution in the European Union to print a consolidated version which can be read before it has been approved in all 27 member states. This is a decision. The European Parliament, we agreed unanimously in the Constitutional Affairs Committee that we wanted a reader-friendly edition, a consolidated version which could be read unanimously. We will not have it because higher powers decided we cannot have it. This is an instruction from some prime ministers. They do not want the text to be read. The order is sign, read afterwards. And if it's the way you make your insurances, then uh, you can also take the Lisbon Treaty. But this is how they have managed to have the vote in the Hungarian parliament 17th of December. 385 members of the Hungarian parliament approved this text without even having it on their table. It's what I call blind confidence. Only after some weeks we will be able to have a proper document for you. But if, when we have it ready, you can use it on all areas. And there's ready now a 3,000 word alphabetic index so that you can compare what is in the Constitution, what is in the Lisbon Treaty. Because here they have refused to give us a table of comparison between the, the different texts. So that the text from the October edition cannot be compared to the new one. And to confuse everyone, they then insert a new numbering system. It's the first time they change the numbers to avoid people to work with it. We have now established the tables of comparison, so in a few days you will have on our website the possibility to work with all the different editions, and then you can see that decoration number 27 will then be found in the final text as decoration number number 17. It's not a very sympathetic way the European, the European Council have a work. In this case, they took a political decision, they made a political agreement among prime ministers that this text should not be put for referendum anywhere, then they tried to avoid it in Ireland. They realized it was not possible because your courts in this country are still too independent. Congratulations with that. Um, thank you, Jens Peter. And we hope to have some time, you know, think of what you might still have questions about. Uh, Klaus Hager and I'll let you introduce yourself and yes. carry on. Well, um, thank you very much. My name is Klaus Heger, and uh, I work for the Independence and Democracy in the European, in the European Parliament as a legal advisor. 
now for a couple of years and uh, I have had the chance or rather the desperation to work a thing on these reader friendly editions which, uh, which are so difficult to establish for the simple reason as Peter stated that the article no, the like this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this is a, a tremendous work and it's extremely difficult also to understand these 300 pages of the Lisbon Treaty for the simple reason that, as Jens Peter stated, the current treaty provisions are amended. And it's not like the Constitution, which was per se a new document, but which actually, admittedly, I liked very much. Not not only because uh, as a German I have so much more power in Germany in the European Council, at least, or in the Council voting, but also because it was a document of, to my mind, of uh, clarity. It was short, well, comparably short, and the number of protocols was reduced, so um, actually it was a very good starting point, and so I must honestly say I was in favor. Now the situation has changed, and um, now we have a mini treaty, as, uh, as he said. It's indeed only uh, seven articles long, and uh, uh, it, but it is also 300 pages long, and it has I counted it once 350 primary legislation provisions, and it has 30 new protocols, and it has 59 declarations added. So. This basically shows that the current yeah, that's oh, that's perfect, thanks. The current treaty provisions are uh, amended, basically, and we'll come to that later also, in accordance with the provisions of the constitution, which was rejected. Now, as a small call back to remember what happened, we was basically in '57. We had the European Economic Community established, which entered in force, I think, in 58. Then we had in 65 the Fusion Treaty. Then we had in 87 the Single European Act. Then we had in 91 or 93 the Maastricht Treaty, which entered into force in 93. In 99 the Amsterdam Treaty. In 2001 uh, the Nice Treaty, which entered into force in 2003. And 2004 the famous Constitution and now 2007, the Treaty. And as Jens Peter said already, these are provisions which were always amending the previous 57 uh, road treaty provisions. So basically, the legal framework right now of the primary law consists of one layer over the other. So, and that is why all these, for instance, consolidated versions, even if they are from the council, are not legally binding only the treaties themselves are binding. So, uh, the, the exceptions, as I said before, it's basically we have the constitution which was, the provisions of the constitution which were taken over and inserted into the Lisbon Treaty. There are some exceptions, however, and uh, as Jens Peter pointed out already, the word constitution is not used anymore. Well, if we think of constitution, it's, let's say, the legal fundamental order of an entity, you can and if you look that up, the definition of constitution, you can interpret that in either ways. I mean, a constitution, uh, more and more people say now, especially because of the insertion of the Charter of Fundamental Right, that this is the European common law. This is the European, of course it will be the Charter itself, the core is this fundament, but also the treaties as amended by the Lisbon Treaty, that fundament of the supranational entity, as, uh, which is the European Union. So then, which was changed compared to the Constitution, was the name Foreign Affairs Minister. It was changed into High Representative of the European Union, I think for external uh, for common foreign and security policy. And uh, his tasks, uh, according to the Constitution and according to the Lisbon Treaty, have not changed. So the name of the function has been amended, has been changed, but its tasks remain the same which means basically the Union will have the Foreign Affairs Minister in the future. Uh, which, which was extremely, to me, uh, as a lawyer, something very beneficial was uh, that the denomination of uh, secondary law was simplified and uh, the Constitution had proposed to use the terms uh, framework laws and laws. Now this has been changed in the 
Lisbon Treaty.